Welcome everyone to That Magic Moment. I am your host Brandon Dillon aka The Grey Falcon and we're going to go ahead and get on in here. We are opening up a set booster of Strixhaven and this is going to be my first box. Uh, you've probably seen other ones up on YouTube and other locations but someone who does not get early access to these things this is going to be my first chance to open up one of these actual boxes now i have opened up the uh one of the pre-order things one of the the uh, i can't even remember what they're called now my brain has stopped um the pre-release boxes that's what i'm looking for there and I managed to pull a Demonic Tutor out of that one. I'm pretty happy overall with my pulls from that. And I'm excited about this. Uh, if you haven't done this before, if you don't know me, I'm pretty new back into Magic. I played way back in the day. And this is just me kind of getting back into it. And I've opened a couple of boxes now. I picked up one of Commander Legends. And I picked up a Jumpstart, which is live and available for you to check out. That one opened up an Allosaurus Rex on that one. So super excited about that and excited to see what's in here. So I can add to my Commander collection and maybe look into building a standard deck or something for playing with my friends. I thought of picking up a draft box. They were available. Uh, long story short, this box here is became available to me because... Sorry about that. I'm going to adjust the camera there for just a moment on you. But this box is from my LGS. And I've purchased other product from them before. And I've been rather happy with picking up stuff from them. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, my LGS hasn't had a great deal of luck in dealing with their distributor and Wizards of the Coast. Now, part of the problem with that is, is they can't do Friday night magic. And that's because their store closes at eight o'clock on Fridays. Their primary thing is not gaming. They do all kinds of hobbies, but their big hobby is remote control cars and other things like that. So unfortunately they're not top priority, but they also sell more product in the area than most of the other local gaming stores do as well though. They don't overdo their prices. They don't go in there and they're not setting the price to be $150 for a draft booster when you order it or pick it up. They are basically charging what it's supposed to be, what it was on Amazon at $115 for these. And unfortunately, they, they just can't get certain products. Like, they could not get the actual... Uh, buy a box card so the promo cards were not sent to them at all and this is a problem to me because if a local gaming store can't get the buy a box promo and I have to go to another store and spend an extra 25 to 50 bucks in order to buy one of these boxes just to get that promo card that's concerning especially given how much of this product they actually sell Lots of friends who pick it up. They do play there. You can sit down at a table and play. They just can't do events on Friday nights simply because that's when their store closes. They, they're not equipped for late night Fridays, unfortunately. They are open all day Saturday. They open before most LGS is open. So you can get in there and go early. But that's partly because the other products that they have to sell, not uncommon to get people who are coming in earlier in the day in order to buy that type of thing. So... There you have it. Thus, I was able to go out, pick this up this morning, come back home, set up for a stream all before, you know, 11 a.m. on a Friday. So there you have it. And that also brought up something else because I was speaking with the owner and it turns out he has to spend $100 per box to get these things. $100. So we already knew that prices were potentially going up. But for the local gaming store to have to spend $100 in order to pick up one of these boxes just seems ridiculous. It's, it's insane that they have to charge this much. Meanwhile, uh, on Tuesday, so I'm not getting it on release day, I did order a box off of Amazon as well. And that box I got for $86. Bucks, which means Amazon is getting a significantly cheaper deal. Now, my only thought on this is 
that Amazon's its own distributor potentially on this. Amazon does have the supply chain. It is possible that they are receiving these at a distributor's price directly from Wizards, and then all they have to do is mark it up a little bit to get a profit. So go figure. So I'm going to open this up. We'll take a look. Now, don't think that I got cheated on the $86 box now because that is shipped and sold from Amazon, not from a third-party seller on there directly from them. So I did get a really good deal on that, and that's why I picked it up. But I also support my local gaming store. Now, part of the reason for getting this box from my LGS also is because the distributor back in March, if you'll remember, I was supposed to get a box of the Mystery Booster box because it said it was coming back in stock in March. Well, the distributor never told the LGS that uh, they just never took that out of their inventory information. That was actually supposed to be canceled out. The Magic was no longer going to be printing the Mystery Booster box. You couldn't get it anymore but it was in their system that they were supposed to get it. So I moved my money over to this box, not knowing what was going to be available. Unfortunately, I wish it had been the Japanese box, but they didn't have any of those. They didn't order any of those. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one of those and hope for one of the uh, mythical archives in the full Japanese. And that, that's just the way it goes for local gaming stores because they don't necessarily have this information when they have to place their orders to find out what their customers want. And here we are. I considered the draft booster, but unfortunately, I am just not doing the draft with my friends this time through. I really do enjoy that. I think it's a lot of fun to go through that type of thing. We just unfortunately did not have time to sit down and do that. So... I have this order instead at a price that's higher than Amazon and all because either getting screwed over because Amazon is their own distributor or the distributors are, are jacking up prices and causing problems for the local gaming store. As we all know, Magic has been less and less interested in how the local gaming stores are producing. But enough about all that. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look and see what we got. So we'll just pop that open. Wizards of the Coast sealed plastic. And slide this baby right on out. Okay. So let's flip the lid Let's see uh, we have our little set thing there that we can shove back there and whatnot pull that out and I'm just going to slide this over here to the side because not going to be particularly worried about this box overall but we can just see that over there and we'll start opening up the packs all right so pack number one Let's see where this gets us. Oh, nothing special there on the back. I'm a little art card. Nothing special for the art card. Let's just, I'm going to set that up there. Doesn't really matter. No one is going to want to stare at that one anyways. Mountain Introduction to Prophecy. Quandrix Pledge Mage. All right. Quandrix Campus, definitely a Quandrix based uh, pack that we got here. Bird Wizards, got an instant, solve the equation. Draconic Intervention is the first rare. We have Flame Scroll, sorry. So Draconic, Draconic, ah. I might even be saying that right. Draconic Intervention, Flame Scroll Celebrant. We have Infuriate. And Soothsayer Adept. So we'll go ahead and drop that foil up there. Junk token. A little Strixhaven, our, our mythical archive. And just one of our rares there. And our second rare there. So overall, mediocre start. All right. Second one. Let's see what we have. Hear that pack cracking. Not open it at the bottom for me easily. All right. Ooh, but we got something special there. 
Okay, another art card, just plain art. Which way does that one go? Kind of looks like it goes that way, doesn't it? All right. Foil land. Sure, let's go ahead and put the foil land over there with our foils. And fractal summoning, lesson cards. So if you see that little symbol up there in the top, that indicates that it's a lesson. I've seen other YouTubers and things talking about that and uh, not entirely sure what was going on with that. Well, that that's just the lesson. And so, yeah, try cleaning that up for you a little bit. Had to look really good on the box, but it's looking a little fuzzy on the card, so sorry about that. Ooh, getting way fuzzy. There we go, that's better. Alright, sorry about that. Okay, so lessons. That little indicator up there kind of looks like a guitar is, uh, yeah. Just the lesson. Quandrix Campus. Okay. Big play. Frost Trickster. Charge through. Mage Duel. Quandrix Apprentice. Quandrix Cultivator. Gnarled Professors are rare. We have Tezit's Gambit. And Maelstrom Muse. And a Lana War Reborn. All right. So, enters the battlefield tapped, add one green, craft one. This land enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one encounter on it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may move a plus one, plus one counter from this land onto it. Okay, well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Maelstrom Muse. It is a pretty effect for that foil, I must say. Hit that light just right. Let's see that like flame effect extra up through the blue, but nothing too incredible there. Actually, I'm just gonna keep all of these kind of up here. Put that in our foil pile. Nothing spectacular in that foil pile yet, though. And land. Got our tree folk, and that was it for the rares in this one. So again, not super impressed by these. Um, okay, continuing on, let's see what we get. Unfortunately, with the last set uh, booster packs, I kind of stopped having interest in them. I looked at a few of them, but for the most part, they've been uh, rather unimpressive. They... And it kind of makes me wish I got the draft, but after seeing some of these get opened, I know that I can get extra of the Mystical Archives out of this, potentially more than I can get out of the draft. So that's really why I broke down and went ahead and went with this. So we'll see if we get anything great. Normal and Mercurial Transformation. So we got an uncommon in that first slot. Silver Quill Campus, Silver Quill Pledge Mage. Owlin, Shield Mage, Owlin, Owlin. Silver Quill is red by, led by an Owl Warlock, so that plays right into that theme. Combat Professor, a Core Shaman for Lorehold Pledge Mage. A Wormhole Serpent, Symmetry Sage, Hall of Oracles, mm, so that's one of our rares there. Let's go ahead and drop those up there. And then Agonizing Remorse and Orc Wizard as our foil. Okay. On to the next one. Who knows what we've got in here? Let's find out. I don't know if there's anything particular special or fancy that I can get out of this uh, I guess the list is a part of this that was what that one land is from is the list um, but you pull a land from the list you're probably not super excited about that uh, there we go art card for the 
silver quill uh, dragon. We have ourselves introduction to annihilation. Mage duel. Oop, dragons approach that one. Oh, let's set that over there. That is a good pull. That one, last I checked, is still a couple of dollars. Dragon's Approach is one that you definitely want to get your hands on. Potentially multiple, regardless of what you're playing in. And we have Plum the Forbidden, Mage Hunter, Access Tunnel, Hall Monitor, Detention, Blade Historian is one of our rares. It's the only rare so far, right? Yeah. So not hitting big on this one so far. Blade Historian. Revitalize. And Selfless Glyph Weaver in the foil. All right. And on the back of that, it is the Deadly Vanity. Okay. So that's exciting. That's, uh, I don't know. I like his ability. Exile Selfless Glyph Weaver. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. That is a nice little, uh, I need to save myself right now and my creatures. Okay, on to the next pack. Man, that does look good, doesn't it? Just the foil effect on his bubble. I do like that. I'm trying to capture, there we go. Nice effect there. Okay. No full art, nothing special. Oh, but we did get another list card here, so let's see what we have. Okay. So there's our art. And planes. Mascot expedition. Dragon's approach again. Oh, two of those. Man. I'm excited. Those are definitely going in my red dragon deck. And then we have Heated Debate. Augury Battle Seer. Augury? Augury? I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sudden Breakthrough. Emergent Sequence. Kelpi Guide. So it's those are some of our uncommons there. Zamoni Quandrix Prodigy. Ooh. We have uh, Velomach Lorehold. I, I can't say that. <laughs> but that's the Lorehold dragon. So we got one of the dragons. That's pretty exciting. Mythic there. So that's my first mythic that we've pulled. That'll go great with my dragon's approaches. Doomblade. Uh oh. Quandrix Pledge Mage in the foil and ooh Uro that that is a nice pull Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath legendary creature that is a big one man <laughs> I didn't even know he was on the list that's exciting he's uh banned in most things but he is playable if you want to play him in uh say Gladiator Oh, I completely re didn't realize that. Mascot Expedition is a mythic lesson. Create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. A 3-2 white spirit creature token and a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's uh, quite a few creatures for your 7 mana there. I'm going to go ahead and just... So, three mythics in that one pack? Really? Wow. That's, uh, yeah, three mythics, one pack. I'm going to look through that one again. Make sure there wasn't anything else I missed, but that's impressive. Three mythics. So, I haven't seen anyone actually pull four rares, and that's the first time I've seen three mythics go. And I think those are the only mythics I've pulled so far yet, but... Oh boy, that is big. Three mythic pull in that. Okay. Well, that's exciting. On to the next one. Uh, wow. Yeah. No full art yet, but still. 
uh, haven't had any of the big polls on the mythical archive. I'm sure I will. It seems like there is like one big one and they know that they're putting one big mythical archive card in each box. Well, let's go ahead. There's our art there. Continuing on forest, uh, just giving a sneak peek of what our foil is back there. Containment breach, Lorehold campus, enthusiastic study. We have twin squirrel shaman, master symmetrist. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I don't have a good, I don't have a great setup for this. So I'm going to have to work on that if I keep doing these. Divide by zero. Another helix. Golden ratio. Elemental explosionist. That looks like our first rare there. Yep. Excuse me. I'm looking around my uh, camera here and having trouble seeing. So that's why I missed that last, that first one that had been a mythic. And I just was not expecting that. So elemental explosionist expressionist we have shock and electrolyze is our foil that's uh that's a good looking foil man look at that waves of power just coming out of that ball that is awesome i like that so we'll go ahead i know it's a foil pull but i'm going to go ahead and put it in the mythical archive pile there and just leave it at that. Okay, next up we shall see what we get. We've already uh, we've already gotten some big hits here unexpectedly. That list helped out with a mythic from the list. Man, oh man. All right, there's our art. Looks like we're gonna have a blue base island. Spirit summoning. Oh, lore hold. Heated debate. Augury Battle Spear again. Sudden Breakthrough. Elemental Masterpiece. Uh, Resculpt. Teach by Example. Secret uh, Rendezvous. That one. That one's pretty decent. Look at the target opponent. You and target opponent each draw three cards. So yeah, I like that. And here is our first rare sparring regimen and we got strategic planning at, with rutha mercurial artist mercurial artist okay again really cool on that foil i know that you know no one's rushing out to pick that guy up but still looks really good in these foils so far we'll see about the curling though uh, I have a bet that uh, that's still going to be a problem. I know a few people who have seen some of the videos and they're like, no, no, the foiling's getting better. And I'm like, ah, I think you're talking about like the mystical archive foiling. Cause if you buy the collectors, every single one in the collectors, it has little foiling on those things, which it is not the case in these. You are not getting the etched foil border on those so it's like they're trying to set the collector's ones apart and still make even just the basic mythical archive ones worth more than the ones you get out of the set or even the draft boxes so yeah here is our art oh another another list card here we have ourselves a flashy mountain and expanded anatomy Elemental Masterpiece, Resculpt again, Teach by Example, Pop Quiz, uh, Pigment Storm, we have a Decisive Denial, Prismari Command, that's our first rare in there, we have Auric Lore Mage. Search your library for a card, put it into the graveyard, then shuffle. If it's an instant or sorcery card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Auric Lore Mage. It'll be really good on those graveyard recursions. Divine Gambit. No one asked for you. 
We have Vortex Runner, and what did we get from the list? We got Merfolk Mistbinder. Other Merfolks you control get plus one, plus one. All right, so I'll just put you over there. Next pack in. Getting through these. Uh, might start going a little bit faster through some of these uncommons and stuff. Elemental token. Art card. And we have planes, fractal summoning, make your mark, relic sloth, industrial, uh, industrious historian, quandrix apprentice, quandrix cultivator, emergent sequence. Uh, Kelpie Guile. Double major. Ooh. That's a big one. I like that one. That was one I was hoping to get. So this one is copy target creature spell you control, except it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. So this is this is really awesome. And this is going in my Riku deck. If you don't know Riku, he's all about copying things. So you copy a creature and then you can copy that creature again with Riku. And then you can use double major to copy that creature and then you can use Riku on this to copy that creature again so you with this you can get four copies of a creature if you have the mana for it on top of any other abilities that you might have it's just that extra redundancy in there I love it very excited about that Ooh, blue sun's zenith blue sun zenith oh man Target player draws X card. Shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. Excellent. And then we have Pigment Storm. Okay. Good with that. I'm excited. Got another Mythic out of that. And I got to enjoy getting Double Major. One of the cards that I was really excited about getting out of here. There are a few in here. A few in this set that I looked at and I'm like, oh, man. And given what Riku is, there's a, quite a few cards with the Magecraft that I think will work really well with him to update that deck. So we'll take a look at that uh, going through these. I'm, I'm looking forward to going through these and picking out what cards I want to add to that set. Art card again. And a forest to start. All right. Lesson. Start from scratch. Pop Quiz, Pigment Storm, Spectral Mage, Waterfall Aerialist, Prismari, Prismari Pledge Mage, oh, sorry about that, <laughs> Prismari Campus, Rip Apart, Tempting, or Rick? Um, sure, I'm going with that, Tempting Oric. For each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature or plane walker. That player controls with mana value three or less. That could be really good. That could be very annoying to some people. Whirlwind Denial. I've seen that drop in like every single box that exists. And Mascot Interception. And then we have our uh, normal little promo slash token card there all right third of the way in let's go ahead and get into the middle top middle top middle is where i pulled my allosaurus rex let's see if we can get my next box here Ooh, come on mm, it's not doing it don't want to damage the cards there we go let's see if this uh top one will give us anything incredible right here so we have our art non-signature you haven't seen that. Force card to start. Expanded anatomy. So no mythic there. Spring mare, leech fanatic, blood researcher, backlash triage, trudge. Okay. Deadly brew. Dina. I like Dina. I already have her. Tend the Pests, 
Uh, Vine Glimmer Snarl is our land, uh, or is our rare. So, Vine Glimmer Snarl. You may reveal a forest or island card from your hand. If you don't, enters the battlefield tapped. Okay. Eliminate Crushing Disappointment. Yes, yes, Crushing Disappointment to end us right there on the top middle. So, no Allosaurus Rex level of pull there, but I can't be upset. We have ourselves our Uro in this, and we got a Mascot Expedition. We, there's, there's three Mythics in one pack. That's just insane. One pack for these three Mythics. It's just, yeah, I, that's, wow. So far, no other mythics though. So hopefully there's some more good mythics in here because because yeah, that's um it's one of those polls that you, you hope to see. We have ourselves another list card, so we'll find out what we get here. There's our art. Planes and fractal summoning is our lesson. We have Bibliopex Assistant. Needle Thorn Drake. I like this one. I think this one would have been really good in draft for, for Blue Green. A Flying Death Touch 1-1 one, one for 2. Pretty good if you ask me. Uh, Reckless Amplomancer. Uh, Barog Befuddler. Arcane. Square Up. I have this one in foil from my uh, pre-release kit. Man. The foil looks so good. It makes that square shine right around her. Perfect image. Just well done for how that make that magic effect look when someone's casting it on the art for the card. Golden ratio. And then we have strict proctor. Flying. Whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger. Counter that ability unless its controller plays two. This one, I like this card. If you have a white deck that wants to do some control, that is perfect to go in there. We have ourselves a negate and curate. And what, what's the list card? Let's find out. We have Pegasus Stampede. Buyback, sacrifice a land. Sacrifice in a land and... Any other costs when you play the spell? If you do, Pegasus Stampede into your head instead of your graveyard. Put a Pegasus token into play. That token as a 1-1 one, one white creature with flying. Why? Well, it's old. It's one of those different things. You pay 2 to get a 1-1 one, one flyer. And then you can sacrifice a land to get a second one. Well, it is what it is. Okay. So nothing else grand from the list yet. Let's go ahead and continue on. Our next pack. What shall we have? And our art card. Did we already get that art? I feel like we did. Nope. I guess not. Okay, just some more silver quill going on there. Got ourselves a forest. And then introduction to prophecy. Reckless. Barag again. Arcane subtraction. Academic dispute. Wormhole serpent. Cemetery sage. Master Symmetrist and Devastating Mastery. So, this is pretty good. So, it costs a lot on the upfront, but then it just drops down to four mana. If the four mana cost was paid, an opponent chooses up to two non land permanents they control and returns them to their hand, destroy all non land permanents otherwise. So, you can actually use that as a bargaining chip saying i'm wiping the board but who wants to give me something who wants to do something for me so devastating mastery does have that key ability there Ooh, we pulled ourselves an urza's rage 
and Bibliopex Assistant. Okay. So that's where we're at. We're still at four so far. Four Mythics, three from one pack. Let's see what else we can get. Open this up and flip a -roo. Oh, yeah. That's the back side of the Luca card or front side. I can't remember. Decent card. I pulled a Luca. That was the other big hit that I had from my pre release set. So, pretty happy with that. Oh, confront the past. Return target planeswalker card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, that goes really well with with that card that makes us put something in the graveyard from earlier. Or remove twice X loyalty counters from target planeswalker and opponent control. So, that's excellent. It helps you deal with planeswalkers, helps you deal with creatures, you know. Or so it helps you get a planeswalker back into play or it helps you remove one. So overall excellent play there. We'll go ahead and drop that there. Yes, Urza is a rare, but we left him out of our rare pile. He goes in the myst mythical archive. Okay. Spectre. Molding Karak, Professor of Zoomancy, Spine Karak, Karak, Spine Karak, Krem Session, Witherbloom Campus, Demogoth Woe Eater, and there, ooh, we got the Prismari Dragon. Oh, uh, Galzeth Prismari. Elder Dragon. So now we now have two of the Elder Dragons out of this. That is awesome. Enters the battlefield. Create a treasure token. Artifacts you control have tap. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast an instance or sorcery spell. I, I must say, I really like this ability. I kind of wish it had been on the lore hold. Just because the whole artifact thing and how much that is built around that idea then we got ourselves snake skin veil and demigoth woe eater again in foil okay continuing on let's let's see what we got here so far so far i'm not disappointed i'm enjoying it i've got two dragons approaches so far I would love to have like 30 of those to go in a commander deck. I think I think it'd be a ton of fun to do a deck built around Dragon's Approach. And uh, well, more than just that, because I would want something like Fire Emancipation or Damage Doublers. All kinds of Damage Doublers or Triplers built into this deck. Three mana, constantly popping and just doing three damage and then you get to put dragons in for doing all that damage and you can have any number of them so imagine just you know turn after turn popping th six nine damage to your opponents and you know they can't really do much about it or they could counter a bunch of them but if you have a ton of them in there it doesn't matter you're just throwing them in one after another there's our art card so yeah reduced memory that's our our lesson in here continuing on through but yeah dragon's approach i'm i'm excited about that i know most people are quandrix cultivator emergent sequence uh kelpie guide zamone quandrix prodigy and there's our first rare verdant mastery you may pay four rather than this spell's mana cost. It's three and a green. Just shortening everything there. Search your library for up to four basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them into the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control. If the four cost was paid, put two of them onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into your hand, then shuffle. Let me know the rules on this because this, this seems confusing because 
recording this, I'm spending six and giving up one of my lands to my opponent. Does that mean I get to put the other three into play under my turn immediately? Or am I putting paying four and then it's just better to pay the four because I get the two lands in play automatically and then two in my hand? I don't know. Is is the six mana giving me all three lands in play at once and an opponent one? I, I don't know. I'm very confused by the reading of that card. So, yeah, let me know if you know. Ooh, Mind Desire. Shuffle your library. Then exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card without pl paying its mana cost. Plus Storm. So that's exciting. And then we get ourselves a foil Prismari Campus. Okay. So we have ourselves two Mythics from the Mythical Archive. Two Dragons, an Uru, and a Lesson for the Mascot Expedition. Doing well, I think. Overall, I am pleased with that. Sorry, I have bumped my camera here. Let's, let's straighten that out for everyone. Go ahead, let's, let's just move that there. All right. So into the next pack. Still Strixhaven, still doing strong. Oh, another list card. Still no signature card. We got that, though. That looks good. I'm not a big fan of the art cards. I think they're kind of silly. If they were actual cards, that would be incredible. But uh, they're not, so... Yeah, kind of kind of irritating. I guess you could use some of these as I don't know. Could, could would you play this as a proxy card? Uh, I don't know. It's not really any different. It's the art of one of the cards. So, you know, that's the island there for that. So, it's entirely possible that you could uh proxy that in and that's your island instead of of that let me know what you think do you think the art cards would be a good way to to proxy in hmm thoughts opinions responses uh environmental science that's our lesson mm, continuing on through here Leyline Invocation. Divine divide by zero. That's that's pretty good. Get, yeah, that's um there's few things that you could really take advantage of with with that. And then you also get to learn with it, so you get to pull an extra card into your hand effectively. Learn is awesome. Especially commander. If you're doing commander, I highly recommend looking into getting plenty of the learn cards in there and then you can just pull your lessons out from anywhere basically it's 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 a nice setup and if you own multiple of them that means you can pull it multiple of them out from outside of the game just great idea for just increasing the number of cards for what's actually in your deck all right accomplished alchemist oh so this is our rare Tap to add one mana of any color, or tap add X mana of any one color, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Ooh, that, that could play well. It's a 2-5, it's a mana dork, but could be a powerful mana dork, depending upon how much life gain you have. Another one, we have Pestilence Cauldron. Discard a card, create a 1-1 black and green pest creature token, when this creature dies, you gain one life. Tap plus one mana. Each opponent mills a card equal to the amount of life you gained this turn. Oh. Yeah, you, if you had infinite life combo, this could, uh, this could kill off all of your opponents. It's one way of doing it. And then four and tap exile four target cards from a single graveyard draw a card so card draw with exile that's cool i like that one we have defiant strike as our mythical archive card and then the back of this one is restorative burst return up to two target creature land or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand each player gains four life 
exile restorative burst so you get to heal as well as uh do some damage there or well depending upon what you pull out <laughs> all right defiant strike we have Resculpt, Exile Target Artifact or Creature. Its controller creates a 4-4 blue red elemental creature token. Not terrible, but these keep getting power creep. They go from like 1-1s, 0-1s, and now we're looking at cards that are giving 4-4s four out. So it's really got to be worth it to want to kind of play that. And then we have, oh, Maelstrom Nexus. First spell you play this turn, Cascade. No. Oh. That's nice. I do not have that one. Okay. Maelstrom Nexus. Excellent. Gotta love Cascade. Okay. Continuing on. Five colors. I need to get a five color deck. I don't know. Okay, so there's our art. But yet yeah, two mythics. Two mythics from uh just the light there. There we go. That's a little better. But yeah, two mythics from the mythical archive or not from the mythical archive from the list. That's I don't know that I've done that before. I don't I don't know that I've seen anyone pull two mythics from that position. I've seen I've seen plenty of things get pulled from uh from other slots before. Plenty of rares, but not two mythics before. Okay, so mountain, our lesson is spirit summoning. And Wither Bloom Pledge. We'll go ahead and get through here. Star Pupil. Mm, promising I witch Quandrix command probably have all the commands coming out of the set it looks like got ourselves a stone rain and forty fine draft okay so that's it for that one continuing on Maelstrom Nexus. Man, that really makes me wish I had a uh, had a thing for that. Okay. Five color deck, because I do not. Might get traded for, for something that I can use in one of my existing decks. Either that or I'm going to have to... I, don't know, I have a few decks that I could do multicolor, and we'll have to figure that out. All right. Planes. We have start from scratch for our lesson. Leyline, Eureka Moment, Vortex, Archway, Field Trip, Soothsayer Debt, Decisive Denial. And there we go. Callous Blood Mage. I already have one of him. So if he ends up worth anything, he'll be used as some trade bait, but I doubt it. We have Calm the Firstborn. Mage Hunter's Onslaught, and what do we get from the list? Oh, Ethereum Horn Sorcerer, Artifact Creature Minotaur Wizard. For three mana, one blue and a red, return Ethereum Horn Sorcerer to its owner's hand and cascade. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Artifact Creature. Repeatable cascade. Yeah, that would uh that could be very annoying and frustrating. So yeah, awesome. So far, the list has been good to me. For the most part. But yeah, that's three cards. Rare or higher. Two mythics. Uh art card, nothing special there. Forest. And we have Expanded Anatomy. Eureka Moment. Vortex Runner. Archway. Field Trip. Soothslayer Adept. Quadrix Pledge Mage. Golden Ratio. 
Multiple choices are rare. First rare, anyways. Okay. Multiple choice. If X is one, scry one, then draw a card. If X is two, you may choose a player, then return a creature they control to its owner's hand. If X is three, create a four, four blue, red elemental creature token. You know, I could create a four, four for two using that, uh, that one card. I guess that'd be better to use on myself. Couple of mana, give myself a four, four really quick. I, I don't know. That might've set opponent. I'm not going to go back and look right now. I'll probably pull another one. If X is four or more, do all of the above. And Memory Lapse. Counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. Okay. Spiteful Squad is our shiny, and then there's our token. Lorehold Rockjacks. I like that elephant. It's a cool looking card. I don't think that card is necessarily special. I, I, I honestly couldn't say, but that elephant is cute. I love it. I think it is awesome to have uh, more elephants in the set and some elephants that are not just, you know, little low powered kind of pointless things. Let's see what else we have in here. There's our token. Oh, there's our signature card. So if you can see that. Got the uh, giant pest monster there. Island and inkling summoning is our lesson. Okay. Oh, a little sneak peek there. Professor's warning. Letter of apprentice or letter of acceptance, not apprentice. Wow. First day of class, eager first year, spiteful squad, arrogant poet, academic dispute, frost bolt snarl, or frost boil snarl. Sorry, that's our land, that's our uh, reveal an island or mountain, and it comes into play untapped. Otherwise, it comes into play tapped. So it is what it is on that one. And then Adventurous Impulse. So that's pretty good. I like Adventurous Impulse. The Foil. Man, I pulled the Foil and I pulled this one already. But the Foil version. The light beams coming down on this. Oh, just so gorgeous. I, I, I just love the art on these. And the way the foiling is done on a few of these just for the looks. It's incredible. What do we have here? Our Foil is Eliminate. Uh, nothing special there. And then our token. So we'll just go ahead and drop eliminate in our mythical archive pile there. Okay, continuing on. That's two thirds done. Down to the final third. Let me know what you're thinking of the set so far. Let me see, know what you're thinking of what's been pulled, what you've seen. So far, I'm really digging a lot of this set. Ooh. Another signature card. Excellent. It's a good looking card. Who did that one? Awaken the Blood Avatar. Kiai Kotakai. If I'm pronouncing that right, I don't think I am. Foil Land. All right. We have Inkling Summoning again as our lesson. Haven't been, uh, oops, sorry. I haven't been getting a whole lot of super variety in those. I, I don't know how many of these are actually exist, but you know, when you get to basically get to use a learn to pull in a free, free extra card, I, I can't complain too much, even about the terrible ones. Uh, Tome Shredder, Thrilling Discovery, Honor Troll, Fortifying Drop. Devouring Tendrils, ooh. Blackish Trudge. Deadly Brew, and Semester's End. 
exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of the next end step, return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of them enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. If it's a creature and an additional if it's a creature and add an additional loyalty counter on any planeswalker. So that's pretty good. That uh if you got that spirits deck from the last set from Kaldheim, that goes well in there with that whole flicker ability thing. I like that. We have ourselves Opt and Plant Dog by you, Groff. Nothing, nothing special or incredible there. And moving along, that was a little token card there. Okay. What is next up? Some more art. Very pretty art again. Planes. And our lesson is Introduction to Annihilation. Exile target non-land permanent. It's control. Lure draws a card. So I do like this one. Um, it is five. So it is pricey. They still get a benefit. But it is a common. So that's probably why. And it does. But it does allow you to pull in removal from outside of the game. That's why I really like this. So while it's not cheap, if you're in a bind and you play a lesson or a learn card, it does give you access to removal from outside of the game that you wouldn't normally. So I would definitely keep this one handy. That's one of those reasons for those learn cards. So while, while this isn't as great as a lot of other removal, if you have no other choice, this is incredible and it's removal in any color. Campus Guide, Defend the Campus, Mage Hunter's Onslaught, Rise of Extus, Lash of Malice, Witherbloom Apprentice, Bookworm. <laughs> just, I like the bookworm. It's not even an incredible card. It just, it amuses me. I wish this had been some really incredible, like, rare or mythic. And they just put some really awesome stats on it. But no, it just, yeah, Bookworm amuses me. And then we have Baleful Mastery. You may pay two rather than pay this spell's mana cost. If the two cost was paid, an opponent draws a card. Exile, target, creature, or planeswalker. So save yourself a little bit of mana for this removal. And they get to draw a card. So not terrible overall. It's not like it's going into play. Ooh, Blue Sun Zenith again. That is our second one. And then our foil snakeskin veil. So Blue Sun Zenith twice. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder what I could potentially trade a second one of those for. I don't know what the value is on that one right now. I will have to look that up a little bit later, though. All right, continuing on. Let's see. No more list yet. And on the flip. Ooh, there's our bookworm again. Awesome. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't care much about the art cards, but man, I might, I might pro use those as proxies. I'll, I'll have to see if uh, people would care about that check with my play group on that kind of thing and in that case it's not not even about the rarity it's just about using that art card because yeah if it's if it's just going to be um if it's just going to be in there doing nothing for the most part i'm uh yeah yeah i just i'd much rather have that art it's that's really what that's all about okay island and pest summoning for our lesson okay stone rise spirit pillar drop warden pilgrim of the ages uh, we got the woe eater again eye witch academic dispute wither bloom command is our first rare 
We have Selfless Glyph Weaver again. This time it is not in foil. Again, good one. I like that one's ability. Village Rights. Returned Past Caller. Okay. What are you? Return Past Caller enters the battlefield. Return Target Spirit Instance or Sorcery Card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, not bad. Very lore hold. Graveyard Recursion. That's, that's nice. I like to see that. It is expensive. It does cost six, but still better than nothing. All right, continuing on. Mm, what are we going to pull out of this one? Is this going to be another super mythic pack? Let's find out. Well, we didn't get the list. Oh, but we do have ourselves a selfless glyph weaver if we want to use that. Which is tempting for me. Forest for our land. Containment breach for our lesson. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If its mana value is two or less, create a 1-1 one, one black green pest creature token with when this creature dies, gain one life. Not bad. Expel. Stonebound mentor. Stone rise spirit. Pillar Drop Warden. Man, I would love another Dragon's Approach. It's got to be a rare one, though. It's all I can figure is it's got to be rare in these. Pilgrim of the Ages. Fuming Effigy. Dina, again. I like Dina. And then Shine Shadow Snarl for the land. So our Silver Quill show a land. Put it out untapped. Not bad. Not incredible. Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix deals three damage to any target. You gain three life. All right. And big play for our foil. Okay, so we are still at three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Yeah, eight mythics so far. I've heard. A lot of these get like 10 plus, so so we'll find out. I'm, I'm happy I got this. Oop, there's a list card. Happy I went with this pack so far over the uh, the normal one, because just the, the, the archive cards for things that I did not have and can either use as trade or would be really good in a deck. I'm excited about that. All right, Swamp. As our land, our lesson is... Elemental Summoning. Okay, nothing grand there. Crushing Disappointment. Beaming Defiance. Infuse with Vitality. Hunt for Specimens. Unwilling Ingredient. Honor Troll. And Shrine Shadow Snarl again. That's, that's disappointing. Okay, and then we got... Ooh... Jadzi Oracle of Arkvos. I have no clue how to pronounce that. Sorry for butchering it. It is an 8-drop. You better be powerful for a legendary creature, human wizard. Discard a card. Uh, return to owner's hand. Oh. I don't know... It kind of seems like other people could do that to return it to my hand. I don't know if that would be bad or good or let's see. Whenever you cast a co or copy an instance or sorcery spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it into the battlefield. Oh, that is powerful. Um, hopefully not just anyone can discard because if you're playing an eight drop and they can just discard you know a random land they had in their hand to get rid of this that would be frustrating okay thrill of possibility there and on the back we have journey to the oracle it's a four drop on the back of this you may put any number of land cards from your hand into the battlefield then if you control eight or more lands 
you may discard a card. If you do, return Journey of the Oracle to its owner's hand. You may discard. Return to owner's hand if you own eight or more lands. Okay. And then you pick it back up and then you can cast her for the eight. Oh, that is nice. So you play this side. Hopefully it doesn't get countered. You put a ton of lands into the battlefield, return it to your hand, and then you have, if you have eight or more, you can then cast her. That's impressive. That would also go so well on my dinosaur deck. Ooh, yeah, that, that would be great. Thrill of Possibility. Oh, why did I put that up there? That goes with these bad boys. Okay. Mage Hunter. Okay, is our, our foil. And from the list, we have ourselves a Nazumi a Grave Robber. I already own him. I own the original him. Good card. Legendary creature. Um, doesn't have a stamp. I don't actually... Oh, there it is. Uncommon. Okay. I do like that one. If you're making... Oh, I'll keep bumping that. I'm sorry. But that one, if you're making a rat deck for a commander, that's, that's probably your commander right there. Just go with that rat theme. All right. No list on this one. That's okay. Let's see what we've got. Some more awesome art. I like that. We got that card, so that could be used as a proxy. At least if my group is okay with it, I'm using that as a proxy if I put her in any card or any decks. All right, Island and, ooh, Academic Probation is our lesson. Choose one. Choose a non-land card. Opponent can't cast spells with the chosen name until your next turn. Or choose target non-land permanent until your next turn. It can't attack or block. And its activ activated abilities can't be activated. So, yeah, that's a nice little obnoxious card for, for two mana. That is a good lesson to learn. <laughs> and it, it is a lesson, so it doesn't have to go in your deck. It's... Temporary emergency removal if you play a learn card again. So yeah, pay attention to that. I think that is going to be a powerful mechanic overall. Uh, unless there's some rule that has come out about that with Commander that I am not aware of. But yeah. Uh, Fuming eff Effigy, Pillar Top Rescuer, Blood Age General, Ageless Guardian, Wormhole Serpent, we have a Cemetery Sage, Master Cemetrist, Devastating Mastery, again, we've seen that one already, Cultivate, and Lorehole Pledge Mage. Okay, so nothing incredible. We have four packs remaining. We shall see where this... Oh, nope. Grabbing two at the same time. That box is starting to bounce. So we're just we're gonna pull that box there. We'll lay those here. Set that to the side, because yeah, that, that wasn't holding up any longer. Okay. And next up, what shall we pull? Ooh, got another list card. List has been good to us so far. Maybe it'll be good to us again. More art. Planes, Introduction to Prophecy again. All right. Pill Drop Rescuer, Blood Age General, Ageless Guardian, Study Break, Cogwork Activist. Tend the Pests, Demigoth again, Rush Rebirth. Okay, so there is our first rare at least. Rushed Rebirth. Choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value. Put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. 
So, yeah, um, it can be pretty good, especially if you have a removal to go along with it, and then you get yourself something big out of it after, uh, after choosing a card. God's willing. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And Biblioplex. Ooh. Excuse me. Biblioplex. Shiny. Look at the top card of your library. If it's an instance or sorcery card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't put the card into your hand, you may put it into the graveyard. Activate this only if you have exactly zero or seven cards in your hand. That's cool. So, land. Tap for generic. Our list card is Dryad Arbor. Land creature, force dryad. Dryad arbor is green. So it's a land creature. You can, uh, it isn't a spell, it says. Summoning sickness and has tapped add green to your mana pool. Oh, so that's, that's actually quite powerful. Um, play that as a land. So you get a 1-1 one, one for no cost land creature that's that's pretty cool i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna set that aside over here because i have no clue if if that holds any value if it just is what it is all right so this is three packs to go counting this one let's see what we get take a look and There's our art. We got a foil land. I have his card. I don't know that I would ever actually really care to play him, but I have it. I have to look into that more. I got the, the Lorehold pre-con, so the only pre-con I ordered, we'll see. Um, foil land. Our lesson is Inkling the Summoning. Nothing incredible there. Novice Bayou. Tangle Trap, Scurried Colony, Squirrel Card, Fortified Draft, Devouring Tendrils, Archmage, ooh, it's our first Archmage, Emerus, Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, draw a card, ooh, card draw. Excellent. He will, uh, he will definitely be going in my Riku deck. Ooh, a second one. Uh, Kanani, Dean of Substance, a legendary creature elf druid. Exile the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter on it. Four and a green, so five mana total. Create a zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each different mana value among non-land cards you own in exile while study count with study counters on them interesting i don't i don't know how much i would actually use that we have another whirlwind denial there and then on the back we have imbram dean of theory bird wizard flying Two blue and X. Ex and tap. Exile the top X cards of your library. Put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. Interesting. So you could tap two blue and tap. So if you have multiple study counters, you could um, then just put an extra card in your hand each turn that you know what they are. So that's... That could be useful. That's that's a long term play, and promising dusk mage. Okay, that's what we have there. Two to go, including this one. Two to go. Where will we fall? What will we pull? Can we get more incredible 
cards for uh, for this set. Ooh, that's a card I would like to have. That is awesome art right there. Swamp. Our lesson card is Mercurial Transformation. Then Study Break, Cogwork Activist, Berry and Books, Reject, Curate, Divide by Zero, Aether Helix, Wither Bloom, Command. Okay, so. Crosan Grip, Split Second, Destroy Target, Artifact, or Enchantment. I have the original of this. That's a good card. Leyline Invocation, and that's it for that one. Okay, down to the final pack. Um, yeah, in my experience, this pack has never been high value. Uh, maybe they'll prove me wrong today. We did not get a list card, but uh, yeah. Historically, this is a, I don't know. It seems like most of the time the outside packs are low cost packs intentionally. The kind of thing that you put in there with the intent of the box gets damaged. The high value cards are less likely to get damaged because these are kind of the, the barrier packs. Um, that's just been my experience. We'll, we'll see if that turns out true. Maybe they will disprove me today. I doubt it. So Mountain, we have Spirit Summoning for our lesson. Bury in the Books, Reject, Curate, Biblioplex, Assassin, Needlethorn, Drake, Eyewitch, and then Manifestation Sage for our first rare. We have, oh, oh. Maybe I was proven wrong here. Wandering. Uh, Ariak. Ariak. Wandering. So, um, I don't know. Maybe this is the Wanderer and we just don't know it. But anyways, Avatar. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two. If they don't, you may copy that spell. If you may choose new targets for the copy. Oh, that is nice. That is a good one. We have Inquisition of Kozilek there. And then the backside is Explore the Vast Lands. Each player looks at the top five cards of their library, reveals a land card and or instance or sorcery card from among them. Put then puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand and the rest onto the bottom of their library in a random order. Each player gains three life. All right. This is a good one. I'm excited about that. Inquisition of, of Kozilek. Kozilek. Inquisition of Kozilek. Target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it with mana value 3 or less. That player discards that card. Not as good as Duress. And Stone Binders Familiar. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Stone Binders Familiar. This ability triggers only once. All right. And that's the end of it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you thought. If you stuck through all of this, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been uh, fun hanging out with you. So far, I'm excited. It's And it's this Mythical Archive. The Mythical Archive, I think, is, is awesome. It got me a... Uh, got me my, my Demonic Tutor, which I needed. I have not had one of those in a long, long time time um last time i had one of those i was still in high school i got rid of my cards so i was excited about that did not pull it from this set that was pulled from a uh a set long time ago um 
or the one I have now, it was pulled from the pre-release pack. So very excited that I managed to pull that. Overall, very excited about this set. Um, just taking a look through all of these. Doing a quick little kind of sort, letting everyone see what was pulled again from the Mystical Archive. And yeah, I wouldn't expect a ton from this. Uh, Electrolyze might be worth a little bit, but you are going to get a couple of cards in this set that are just uh, high value. Typically, they have at least one in there that's a mythic that's that's worth the money that's put into it. We'll, we'll see how long that holds up. Um, I do know, like, the Demonic Tutor is kind of dropping in price. It's the most recent one. It, it'll sit somewhere around $50. But then over here in our Mythic Pile, we have Jadzi Oracle of... Advios, I, I don't know, I can't pronounce that very well, but really cool with, with its back ability, the journey to the Oracle. Overall, I think this will uh, this will play well, assuming this side does not get countered. You get a bunch of lands out. So, excellent, excellent. And with a landfall deck, that would be very powerful. Uh, two of the Blue Sun Zeniths. So, I got... The, these are the two mythical cards I pulled uh, from the Mystical Archive and Blue Sun Zenith times two. And the list, the list was incredibly nice to me with Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath and Maelstrom Nexus. So happy to pull those very much. So, oh, I got I got three and Mind's Desire. Uh, third Mythical Archive. Okay, sorry. I was wrong on that one. And then I got two of the dragons. So we got the Lorehold and Prismari dragons. And for a lesson, we did get a mythical lesson for Mascot Expedition. So good times there. Overall, two of the dragons approach. So I'm probably going to need to get a bunch more of those. Uh, wait for the price to come down, hopefully. Hopefully, I, two out of that whole box, I would expect that one, I don't know, That's that might be one of those ones that's actually considered like a rare uh, common, so we'll, we'll see how many of those actually come through. But anyways, thanks for hanging out, I, I appreciate all the time that you spent with me. Remember, if you're here on Twitch, click the follow button when I, when I post up new videos. I'll probably be doing another video when I open the second box when that one comes in. Ooh, excuse me. I'll probably open the second box when that one comes in next week. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that, people. I don't know. Had a couple of those this stream, so I appreciate you putting up with me. Uh, if you're watching this over on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button when these come up. And, you, you know, then you'll have them pop up in your feed from time to time. You click the little thumbs up button and it'll pop up my videos a little bit more often. I don't post super often, but. When I do, you get box openings, you get information, uh, a lot of stuff. I am getting a laser cutter, so I am planning to put some videos up on stuff that I've made for that. I'm looking at going to be making my own leather play mats. So we'll look at either doing my, my Gray Falcon on there, maybe some other things. If you have some custom art that you would like etched onto one, I could do that for people as well. So once that comes about... We'll be setting that up for my wife's store because because, yeah, she she appreciates having that those little extra things put in there. So I, I thought I'd help her out. She asked me to make some deck boxes for it. So I'll be doing deck boxes for that as well. But yeah, until next time, have a good one.